welcome back to American Truck Simulator and welcome back to another Extreme Hall video. First things first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we're in today. So we're in a Mac car. We're in a short wheelbase Mac car equipped with the um, ENDT676. That's the 285 horsepower, uh, 1080 foot pounds of torque engine. Um, the One of the early engines that Mac produced that used the um, air-to-air charge cooler or intercooler. So not that we can see too well, but the air cooler here on the right is the double inlet type. Now that's all by and by. Let's go ahead and merge here. I think I've got to go to the port of Takuma here. This is <laughs> this is going to be a fun little uh, little trip. Because the second thing is, and maybe you can see from the mirror, maybe not. I have a couple of double trailers on right now that are roughly as long as, excuse me Volvo, that are roughly as long as Oklahoma. Let's see if the camera stays with us long enough here, there we go. So not the longest double trailer in the game because uh, you can get the one with the Jeep. This has just got the, the two trailers stacked basically one after the other, but still pretty long. Transmission-wise, we're using a 5-speed, but we're using an Allison Automatic 5-speed as opposed to the Mac 5-speed uh, manual. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just use both lanes here, I think. Let's turn my 4-way flashes on. A little bit rough there with the controls, David. And one of the reasons why I'm being rough with the controls is how short this um, this truck is. Oh, that is tiny. Well, the reason why we're using a very short truck is uh, not for the inevitable short jokes, I'm going to turn right here. There's nothing coming up the inside. That's good. But because um, for extreme hauling, we, we really need something that is as maneuverable as we can get it. Especially with these merhusive trailers stacked up behind. Am I going to make this? Oh, probably not. I'm going to mow the lawn here a little bit. Well, let's, um, let's go ahead and check in. Oh, I'm blocking the road here. Okay. Cargo market. So, and here's something else. We're going to attempt. Oh, well, that's tempting. We're going to attempt to hold 360,000 pounds. But what about this milling machine? Now that would be. Oof. That looks an easier route than this. That's a heavier cargo. Uh, uh, it's so tempting. I mean, what's another 18,000 pounds between friends, right? No, I'm going to stick with the original plan because that route looks easier. This route um, looks very mountainous and, and I've got a 5-speed automatic, great. I've got a torque converter, great, but it doesn't mean I'm going to be able to climb those 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 gradients. And um, see if we can... Oh, look at that. We've got the, the issue with uh, the, the front lights flashing orange. Um, yeah, we may have messed this up just a little. To, to get in, if I, I probably should have raised my rear axles, not that that's going to help at this point. Okay, we bounce over that curb, which we we figured that we would. It's kind of an occupational hazard with something this this size. So why the automatic? Well, that torque converter. That's the sole reason why. Um, I wanted the automatic in. I was tempted by maybe a, a 12 speed manual um, with super short gearing. But yeah, I figured, you know, the talk about is going to help a lot, or should help a lot, without so much, um, without so much talk, it, that multiplying the talk available is, is going to be great. Let's turn those four ways off, that's distracting me. Because I've got to get it in the in the port first. Okay, I think we've done it. Great. And thankfully there's a nice easy, easy uh, loading area. Because this is a challenge. Something this long. And I know, I know. Go ahead, Zach. That's what she said. Okay. We've got a suspicion that we're just going to struggle at every single gradient. But, uh, but, I mean, I'm okay with that. So what inspired this video? Well, partly the extreme hauling um, video I did just the other day, which was in itself inspired by Zach hauling with a Cummins KT, which was itself in inspired by 
I don't know what inspired that video. But, uh, yeah, I thought to myself, oh, do you reckon I could do this with a Mac car? And the answer is, well, I don't know. So, let's find out. Maybe this should be driving with numpty, extreme hauling in a low-powered Mac car. A couple of cop-outs. Number one, um, yes, I went with the 285 Mac as opposed to the um, 237. So no, only another 50 horsepower, only another 170 something foot pounds of torque. But that could be very, very useful, could make all the difference. And two, this 5 speed Allison that we're using, it has a 433 final drive. So 55 miles an hour, if we can get up to it, is about 2,000 revs. Right, let's, um, let's get some cargo loaded. Okay. It took uh, over two hours to get uh, those bad boys uh, chucked on the back. Um, yeah, wow. At least they, at least they turned us around. I, uh, I gotta say, my confidence for getting this um, this mission complete without damaging something is fairly low. But you know what? As uh, as Doug said, let's do this. So let's get my headlights on. Lights on for safety. I'm also going to get my, my beacons on, and today, as this is my own trailer, we've got beacons on the front, and we've got beacons on the back. Because, hey, it's a long load. Okay, let's get this Allison box into gear. Full tank of fuel, all the gators look good, we're a little cold um, on the engine, on the water temperature, our engine oil will also be cold. I'm going to um, baby it a little bit, as much as I can. Let's just check my transmission mode. I think we're in high power. If not, we certainly need to be in. Uh, so go to controls, real automatic, high power mode. Yep, okay. I'm tempted to try it on... Uh, no, I'm not really. Not that anything other than high power is just going to be a mess. Right, well, uh, let's see if we can move off. And we can. That's comforting. I didn't expect we wouldn't be able to move off. What this will be doing is putting a whole bunch of heat into that uh, transmission, I would imagine. And that heat's got to go somewhere, so if this simulation covers it, it's going to end up in the, um, in the cooling system, I believe. But I don't think that this covers it now. Do I have to go out the way I came in? Um, or do I have to go to the right? Yeah, I think I'm supposed to go to the right, but I'm, I'm going to do it, ju just in case it we get stuck. I mean, we may get stuck just leaving here, and that would be pretty embarrassing. But uh, we'll see. I added on hood mirrors and the extra round mirrors um, for the sides today, because we're going to need the extra visibility, I think. Go ahead and get my windows down so we can uh, stick our head out. Okay, that seems to be okay so far. Alright. Gonna assume that we're gonna clear, but I'm gonna watch it all the same. Great. Get those uh, windows up. So issues I expect to encounter today are gonna be basically running into things with uh, the second trailer. Um, uh, yes, and any gradient that we, that we come across was gonna be a struggle too. So here, I want to take it extra wide and then cut in, and generally, um, the, the trailers are going to follow each other, but not entirely. So here, um, yeah, i got to steer over to the, to the right a little bit more. I may just be about, yep, yeah, I was just about to, to run into it. Okay, I'm going to get out of this one. Um, Just try to back it up a little bit. Yeah, I may have just completely messed this up already, and I've not even left the yard. All right, so let's angle this first trailer a little bit more to my right, my left as you're looking at it. Okay. I mean, given the amount of mass that's sat behind us, that the fact that it's moving is 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 something. I mean, this might kill the transmission doing this. Okay, I think we're going to clear it there. We've got to be 
There we go. Really careful with the front now. Okay. All right. So if I do this slowly enough, I'm not going to damage the, um, the the trailer. But okay, I think I'm good. Yeah. So the left um, signal is basically making the the front lights uh, flash, and there's nothing coming, so that works for me. All right. Let's go. So it's a full power first to second shift. Nice thing about the Allison as well is um, something Allison in later transmissions called a power shift. I don't know if he's supposed to say it like that, but basically uh, you don't lose any um, any momentum, any speed when you shift up. So that's really useful if you've got that much mass behind you. If you lost a little bit of speed, you would lose maybe. 100, 200 revs, and that might make all the difference between being able to pull in the next gear. We only have five gears, we only have to do that a few times, and um, we're out of gears. Our first gradient of the trip, and I think we're still in second gear. I removed the display on the top today. I don't need to see what gear I'm in, it's an automatic, we're in D for drive. Okay, is it going to downshift? I think it will, but let's see. I'm up full power, 900 revs. Come on, go ahead and downshift. Go on. Don't make me force you to downshift. Or oh, am I in first? I'm in second gear still. Wow. Lift off. So I lifted off completely there and then um, went back on the power. To, so you see how I lost that little bit of speed and it was enough to force it to shift down into first gear. But we were then able to regain the speed, and okay, that has helped. I mean, helped is a relative term, but that has helped. Well, we have uh, eight and a half, half hours before my break. Three and a half hours, it reckons, is going to take us to get there. It's not going to take us three and a half hours. It's going to take us way longer. Okay, I'm going to lift off here and just let this, um, let the truck coast up. Is this Prius? Missed it. Better luck next time, David. Well, I suppose I could, uh, you know, accidentally scrape along the side here. Whoops! <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> my bad. <sighs> I don't know where Zach gets his ideas from about my crazy Prius driving. Okay, maybe I do. Right. <laughs> this is kind of aggressive how we're positioning ourselves, but there we go. The light went to green already. Okay, now this Prius hopefully is going to um, stay stationary for a bit. Oh, I guess I ran into him again. Okay, <laughs> oops. Whoa. This thing is such a tight turning circle because it's so short. And it really helps, I'm just not used to it. Okay, great. We're clear. Let's get back on full power mode. There we go. Can you see it surging forward? Yeah. Alright, so that's now third gear. I'm going to keep the, the pedal mashed right now. I'm not going to use tr cruise just yet. It'll ruin my shift pattern or it'll stop it from um, being clever with the shift. And I think I'm going to use it now. Yeah, okay. I've enabled cruise control. thought it would get me up to 35 because we are going to be taking a long time at full throttle today. Let's go ahead and um, think got a, yeah, got a merge left. So that is probably fourth gear. Let's just check. It is fifth gear. Okay. Well, what do you know? So I'm in top gear at 31 miles an hour and it, it's not accelerating. Um, yeah, this could be a long, long drive. All said and done, we were able to, to move off from rest. We've been able to, to climb a hill very slowly, and we didn't drop down to first gear automatically. We, we ended up encouraging it to do that. We're now picking up speed because either the road's dropping or I'm on the flat. Um, it's hit 35, and I guess it's, it's cruising now. I'd like to try and pick my speed up a little bit. But with 360,000 pounds of cargo, my gross vehicle weight is going to be 400,000 pounds. That's going to be very difficult to stop. Do I have any way stations I'm coming up to? Mm, not for a time. 
Okay, that's useful. Well, I tapped up. Let's see if it gets up to 40. I'm not optimistic it will, but um, we'll give it a go. I mean, have we lost speed? 34, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, this might take some time. But I think at the end of the day, like I keep, like I keep saying, the fact that we're able to hold such an extreme cargo um, is a testament in itself. Now, our fuel consumption is not going to be great today, but it will, I'm sure, be a lot better than trying to do two individual trips, each with this double weight cargo. And even then, actually, if we were going to do this in separate trips, it would be one trip there, one trip back, one trip there. So it would be, be you know, um, three times the distance, not twice the distance. And so we would have to be using three times the fuel before we even think about breaking even in terms of fuel. But yes, there's, there's other wear as well. Every mile you, you wear out other components, you put the transmission under stress, but would this transmission be better able to cope with half the weight? Um, yes. Does the game simulate that? N no. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. The long and short are, if we could do this in, in one trip, then, then we really should. Just like those people who struggle to bring in all of the groceries from the trunk of the car, or all of the shopping from the boot of the car, and they do it in one trip, despite the fact it means overloading an arm with 60 pounds, sorry, 25 kilograms of groceries, then also other weights and um, measurements are available. Uh, I hope this green truck does not drive into me. Okay, you didn't, thank goodness. So I'm still doing about 35, but we're still rolling. And that was good enough for me, so let's see, 144 miles left. Yeah, um, okay, and that weather does not look very encouraging, dead ahead. Now the weather in the real world is also thundering right now, so it's entirely possible that you are hearing thunder anyway. That is not, in fact, from the game. That is from uh, Texas, because Texas. Maybe I picked up a little bit of speed. Oh, so far so good then. Um, we're at, well, between three quarters and, and full tank, so... We've not covered that many miles. Yeah, it, it's going to be a little thirsty. I fully expect it. Um, I'm happy enough with it, with the consumption, whatever it's going to be. We've a 140 gallon tank, I think, on this um, this Mac. It's the smallest chassis, so it's got the smallest tank. So that gives us 280 miles of range if we only get two miles per gallon, which is a realistic uh, number to see from today. Though if we can get up to 40 miles an hour, we'll actually be cruising we're about to go downhill. So maybe, maybe. By my calculation, uh, 1500 revs is going to be 42 miles an hour. So that's about right. We're just under 1500 revs and it looks like we're close to 40. So, okay. It looks like my numbers are stacking up. And 40 certainly seems a lot more social than 35. Let's just check, there's nothing coming up. The unwrap, no, nothing at all. Whoa. This thing is really roly-poly and it's extremely dangerous to drive like that. Okay. I'm all over the road. And it's even worse when I'm driving in, in, in this view, but... Uh, yeah, look at the size of that car going, and the weight. You can't see the weight of it or the mass of it, but just just go with it, all right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Rather a dry riverbed down there. Um, it's, it seems a little low compared to last time. I remember seeing it in the game. I probably just fake remembering it. Or oh, it's a different bridge. Time for a, a sip of iced water, I think, whilst we uh, climb this this gradient. So 
I don't have an oil temperature gauge, but I can see that my coolant is running uh, perfectly normal. We're not, um, we're not overheating right now, and um, the game almost certainly won't simulate um, transmission uh, fluid temperature or transmission being cooled by the cooling system. On the other hand, it may be that it does. It's just you so rarely would see an issue here. And, and that might be, you know, if we have a, a fairly steep climb somewhere and we're using those lower gears and it's uh, cycling in and out the torque converter depending on your speed and load, yeah, that's that's going to be increasing the heat that we, we shunt into the cooling system. But it's not a factor right now. We're in di uh, this a direct drive gear. This um, is the Allison 750 DRD. I think it stands for Drive Deep Reduction or David's Deep Reduction or something Deep Reduction or DR is Deep Reduction something Deep Reduction for David I've no idea what it stands for but the DR stands for Deep Reduction uh, and top gear is a one to one so we're now in fourth I believe and we're about to cycle down through the gears I'm quite sure because um, here's a gradient I'm going to take it out of cruise control and just nail it see if that makes a difference Nope, not really. That's third gear. That's second. And let's see if it's got enough to hold it. Not yet. I'm going to select first at about 1,000. There we go. That's first. Oh, it didn't like that. And it's still losing speed. Okay. This is, um, this is a little worrying. Is it going to keep going? Sorry, everyone. Sorry. It's got me down to pretty much not moving in first gear. Okay, come on, come on. Oh, we're still going. I think we're going to have to call it quits. Look at how much the... Wow. I mean, we are kind of still technically rolling forward, but I, I don't know whether I can really count this as a victory for the hill or for the truck just yet. I know if I stop, it's not going to get going. And I don't think it's going to stop. So. Wow. All right. I'm going to call it quits on this load. Um, we tried and we failed. So let's go ahead and break. And uh, yeah. Okay. I don't think we can get it going. No, it, it, I mean, to be fair, it is it is still moving forward just a little bit, which is nice. Okay, what I'm going to do is uh, stop it, put the parking brake on. Let's see, does it hold it on the hill? It does. Let's do a little bit of uh, creative driving here, I think. Um, I'm just going to skip it forward to work over the gradient. I, we would, I don't really want to cancel the video right now. It would be such a shame. But if I put it maybe here, so this is a, a console mode that you're able to do um, if you enable it in the game, um, and that means you can fly around. Did I hit anything there? Uh. <laughs> okay, well I took the e-brake off, the parking brake off. There we go, completely fine. No damage there whatsoever. Oh, actually, surprisingly, no, no damage. Okay, well, nobody saw that. So, um, looks like we were good to go. That's the danger of um, of uh, te teleporting your your truck, because in this case, we went we went on a straight bit of bridge, and so, oops, and back up to forty already. Look at that. I would say look at that beast to go, but that's because we're going down a hill, and so, yeah, you kind of figure that. I'm glad I didn't take that mountain road. We would uh, we would not have made it. Right, so we're 87 miles away, and we've got just under five hours to go till uh, i got to take a break. But we've got to get there in, in just under six hours, so there's another gradient coming up. Well, we'll see if we, we can make it up the hill. What's better be in the right hand lane now? Is that because. Yeah, okay. Looks like we are taking a, a, an exit here. So let's merge into the right hand lane. Lots of arrows to, to tell me where to go. Okay. 
it down to 35. Uh, I'm going to encourage it to shift down. There we go. Just a quick tap. Oh no, don't tell me it's closed. No, no, we're good. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so I encourage it to, to shift down there early um, to try and uh, keep the momentum going. Otherwise, we might be dropping down to third gear. This looks like a challenge if we go uphill, which we do. Okay, Doug. So we're in the right lane. No, don't, don't go back to fifth. Right, which, which lane do we need, Doug? Keep right, okay. Oh, I did not mean to tap it down at the same time that the transmission selected the gear down, so we went from fourth to second, and now we're back in second, I think. Yep. So we basically went from 1,000 revs to 2,500. Yeah, that's not the kindest to the engine, but it's a Mac, so it's built tough. Wait, some other car vendor or truck vendor has got that um, got that slogan right now. It's a Mac, so it's built to la I don't know what, it's a Mac. Maybe you should just say it, it's a Mac. It's fine, it's a Mac. Right, right lane it ends. Well, that's good because we're taking over most of it. Dropping down another gear. There's another gradient. It's amazing how these gradients don't seem like gradients to you in something low powered. But again, we are doing it. I mean, yeah, there was that one gradient that we completely didn't do. Well, no, we, we would have done it. I would have had to skip forward in the video frustrated everyone behind me who would probably be uh, crashing into me. But look at us, up shifting up a hill. What do you know? Not planning on reaching 55 anytime soon, but with a, with a hill I heading down, I probably could. And then I think stopping the other side would be a real issue. Because I'll break firmly and um, I'll, get, I'll lose my steering input because the front wheels are going to lock up. ABS is not enabled um, in the Mac. I guess it could be, but it's not because um, I, I didn't think it would be authentic. Right, it's bobbing around now, so we go up to 45. Um, so we want to be in the left-hand lane, or the middle lane at least. Yeah, it's um, getting a little uh, un uncomfortable at these sorts of speeds. I could thoroughly destabilize the load by giving it an armful of lock left and right and then seeing what happens to the trailer, but I would like to try and make this trip as opposed to crash. Okay. It's just 60 miles left and it's 5.30, so four hours between now and my rest stop, but I'm gonna get there before seven and that's that's good. I try and take my rest breaks about 7 p.m. and um, that resting till 7, 7 p.m. till 5 a.m. that seems to be quite a quite a nice uh, time to get up and, and be about. It's light either at or shortly after 5 depending on your location and of course the weather. So I do get a bit of night driving in there but not so much. Now with a load like this you probably are not permitted to drive it at night least you shouldn't be because you're moving something that weighs about as much as uh, Edinburgh sorry Edinburgh if you uh, are from the west side of the Atlantic Edinburgh okay well another gradient on the way up but we don't care we're in a Mac it'll crush your uphill gradients and surge down them get tapped up to the cruise to get me up to 55, which I might regret if we do end up picking up a bit more speed. But we're nearly doing 50 right now. Whoa. Steering. Okay. Is there a way bridge here? Do I, yeah, do I want to weigh myself? I kind of do. Yeah, let's, let's go and weigh myself. I want to see how much this, this combination weighs, and then I've got plenty of time. That might be foreshadowing. Oh, hard on the brakes. Very hard on the brakes now. It'd be a shame if I run into this Prius I'm about to. Ah, oh, butt flaps. 
Yeah, so that's a bit of understeer there. That's a lot of understeer there. <laughs> yeah, excuse me, Ford. Mine. Yeah, okay, that's how you don't stop a heavy load. And I was just saying, watch out for the weight of this thing. Yeah, whoops. Well, if it wasn't a Prius, I think it's the Prius's fault there, clearly. He, uh, he brake tested me, officer. whistle as we drive away. What's my fuel like? I've got half a tank. I, it, it concerns me how much fuel these things can, can buzz through. Um, oh, I'm going to get on that way bridge somehow. Alright, let's just try going real real tight here. Let's raise the third axle. It's going to help my maneuverability a little bit. <laughs> I'm beginning to regret doing this. Oh, we'll be fine. We just need to get the nose on and the game will let me weigh the whole package. We'll be fine. Okay, here we go. Alright, let's see. Oh, <laughs> 416,000 pounds. Um, yeah, I don't think we can fit up here easily, so let's back the thing up. I don't know that I can get down next to it, but we'll we'll try it. I'm going the wrong way. Not the first time I've done that, if you know what I mean. Okay. All over the place, but 416,000 pounds. Did I mention how much we weigh today? 416,000 pounds. Um, we could totally calculate our, um, our mass to, to power and torque ratios, but they're meaningless. They're, they're very high or very low, depending on uh, which number you put first. Basically, uh, we're trying to move this with not a lot of power, which we already knew. So I don't know why I had to weigh myself just to figure that out. But You know, just to be safe, I am going to top up and get some more fuel, because I think we're going to be at wide open throttle for the rest of the trip. And yes, I'm completely going the wrong way, and I should be going the other way, but hey, I'm British in America, I'm used to going the wrong way. In fact, it's not me that's going the wrong way, it's everyone else. Yeah, this thing does not like steering when it, when you brake firmly. Okay, so with an Allison transmission, it's very important that um, you put it into neutral before you turn off the engine. Allison's documentation does indeed say if you turn off the engine or if the engine stops and you're in gear, you need to get it serviced. We've burnt 53 gallons so far. That's, um, that's kind of impressive, really. To be fair, it's not that bad. I mean, I think some of the uh, American SUVs are not that much better with, with, with fuel, right? Okay, they, they probably feel it, but they're really not, most of them are not terrible, it depends if how you drive them. Okay, I say most of them. The one I've got is not terrible, given what you're trying to do with it. Okay, that's good enough for me, I'm going to swing it out here, take the left hand lane, back on the power. Now at full power, not that we can really tell. This light's probably going to go on me because, yeah, there we go. Because why would it not go on me? I've got to go up a gradient here. Quick time check. So we still have three hours. It did take a bit of time. Was it worth it? I think it was. I mean, now I know exactly how much I this whole combination weighs. See what happens when we break. Do we just lose the front end completely? Okay, that wasn't so bad. I mean, it did did skid. Right, um, let's go. Look how much the nose gets gets lifted. Right. So I'm at full power. That's first. That's the second, and we almost lose the acceleration. So, um, just checking my mirrors. There's nothing in the outside lane right now. This car might surge past me. Here, here we go. It, was it a Camaro? Did I, did I see? Yeah. Well, there we go. Down to first. Okay, let's see if we can keep 
the thing rolling. I think it's too much for us again. That's a shame. Mm. Oh yeah, this one's even steeper, right? Let's... Uh... Okay, I'm going to do that, the, the same trick again. First of all, let's get the rear axle down. And let's uh, move forward. At least people, traffic can still go past me. There is that. And if I stop here, as long as there's no traffic that's sort of like snuck in, and I'm about to materialize over it, we should be good here. Okay. Back on the power. Okay. Well, we, um, we technically, we cheated again for second gradient, and I think if I just not have to stop at the grid at the red light I might have done okay that bit more inertia as you reach the the hill helps keep you know you're constantly feeding in power it's not enough power to get you up the gradient but you've got a bit more of a buffer or a lot more of a buffer but it was not to be and we're still going up a hill and we're still struggling and we're still three hours left okay all right I would be like maybe we could lean forward and we can get going here because this is embarrassing I'll just put my four ways on just just in case people didn't see this enormous big road train okay come on come on I know we we're, we're still going but can we please like get a move on come on mm-hmm Hey, it's not raining at least. Okay, we we might be cresting the hill, in which case, yeah, here we go. The speed's picked up a little bit, thank goodness. Let's turn those four ways off, I don't think I need those. Horn still works, that's good. This is the top of the roof. This freight liner very gingerly going past me. 2,000 to 1,300. Oh, here's a way station. And if they pull me in, it's like, guys, really? Because we're down a hill. Um, do I take it on the chin and just not pull in? But I think I really should if they go. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. Well, that's that's good. I've set my cruise, I believe, at 55. It's going to keep me accelerating until I reach that speed. I don't think we're going to, but we'll, we'll give it a go. I mean, we're already heading in the right direction, sort of. 35 in top gear at 1300 revs. So there's only two lanes empty and loaded. There isn't an extreme loaded, or you've got to be having a laugh, mate. Which is what I think uh, my way is right now. There's a reason why road trains this way are, need all sorts of special permits, and probably this would need um, an escort vehicle or two. Um, and you've got to have engineering reports, you've got to make sure you can fit out under bridges, you've got to make sure you can go around um, certain curves. Yeah, um, okay. Stay in your lane, David. And my driver's getting tired. 15 miles out, come on, we can do it. We can, uh, we can make it. I would have rather not be getting there when it's dark. It makes it just that so much harder to maneuver, but hey, if we, if it's dark when we get there, it's dark when we get there. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't choose the 488,000 pound cargo, that'd be what, 430 something thousand pounds. Would it have made much difference at this kind of gross vehicle weight? Possibly not, but we wouldn't have, I mean, we might stop on a gradient like this, we might fail to get going. And then the other thing I could have done is given myself more power. Um, 
So, or potentially even um, an engine that both gives you more power and has a higher governor than 2100 RPM. So if I switch to the R700 hood, that's a bigger, bigger hood, bigger bonnet, um, better, better, more space and better potential cooling. I could have used something like the, the Cummins Big Cam the 444XT. That's um, that's its official name. 444 horsepower, so it's a good uplift from what we've got now. 1,400 foot-pounds of torque. Again, it's a nice chunky um, uplift of about. Uh, 30 odd percent. It produces peak torque of 1500 revs, but it does go up to 2300 RPM on the governor. So that would allow me a higher potential cruising speed, which is kind of a bit moot right now because, well, we've reached 40 and a little bit quicker at one point, but yeah, generally we've really not gotten that quick today. And when we did build up some speed going down a gradient, we could not stop the other side. And we um, bumped into a Prius. In fact, my Prius count for this trip so far is two, which is not bad going considering normally it's a zero. My coolant's still sitting at just under 200 degrees Fahrenheit, so that is um, that's still running normal. It's not running hot. I don't expect it to, unless we're doing 2100 revs um, constantly, and um, we're, we're just not. Even dropping to fourth, it's 1500 revs. I could control it manually, I suppose. We might see 203, 204 Fahrenheit, but I don't. I don't think I need to. And this late in the in the trip, there's not not much point. That church is very pretty in the night. I don't remember seeing that. The spire is slightly illuminated. That looks very European style, or very British, very English. You might even say, whoa, yeah, come on, David. Okay, I'm just going to experiment here. I'm going to give it a bit of a rapid swerve uh, left and then right. Yeah, that, that is clearly grounding on something. That's that's not uh, what we really, oh well. I wonder, I wonder what it's grounding on, David. <laughs> Scraping the, the trailer along. Okay, off the power, on, on the engine brake, my bad. Should not have been uh, goofing around. Let's use a bit of trailer brake. That helps. I uh, encourage it to shift down there at that point. That's going to help me. Let's get off the engine brake. Okay. It was not as dramatic slowing down as it could have been, but now we're struggling to reach the to reach the stop sign. That's not good. That's that's got me frustrated. I, I'm now I'm like almost stationary on this this gradient. That's just wonderful. What's my timeline? I've got four miles to cover. I could walk quicker than this, but admittedly not pulling that way. And actually, we picked up a little bit of speed now. Uh, you know, I am I am asking the the truck to do something that really shouldn't be asking it to do. So okay, I'll give it a lot of grace there. Okay, I have to pull up and stop here. I think there is something coming. Um, Ten second rule, but right now, if I don't pull out, I'm going to be here for a bit, probably longer than I've got time for. Okay. Starboard. Really close. Oh, that was very close, but we made it. Of course, all sorts of confusion with the trailers behind me, but we we made it. Yep, look at that. I would say it's perfect, but I don't think it is. Right. Now, one nice thing about these these lights at the front, a bit of extra illumination. That's always good. Okay. Still got the thing planted building up speed and I think we're about to go down a gradient so I've got to be real careful the other side I don't overshot I don't overshoot even not overshot get your tenses right David okay, I'm gonna lift off completely now and let's just coast down the uh, down the, the gradient in fact let's use a bit of engine brake 
So lessons I could have learned. Number one, I should have had a transmission with a retarder, I think, next time I do this. Number two is I probably need 600 horsepower. And that probably need, means not in a Mac car because they didn't have 600 horsepower engines when they were playing around. Well, at least, well, the day there was the Cummins KT, but that being a superliner. So maybe I should have used a superliner with a KT. Except they only went up to 525 for the factory, so... Yeah, that would be a better attempt than this. 50, 90 foot-pounds of torque, um, but you need to probably have a shorter set of ratios to this. i got to slow down again. Okay, I am losing my ability to steer. Taking it really extra wide here. Let's bring it in tight, back on the power. I think we are going to make it. <laughs> Look how much this beastie raises his nose. That is, uh, that's, that's kind of priceless. And when I say priceless, um, that's that's great to see. Yeah, we were basically lifting the nose so much that the steering effort is reduced there. And I think I thought I might have heard a bit of tire squeal. I got it planted, but we're just not accelerating very very well. Okay, I'm gonna adopt for the hey, I made it. What more do you want? Approach to uh, to parking this this thing. I don't think I get an option. I've just got to steer around to the right so let's go ahead and prepare uh, let's just deploy let's deploy my engine brake yep thanks target okay and let's turn in I don't think this is the neatest approach I've ever I've ever had but hey it's neat enough for government work don't go here pitch it left Okay, this is again. It's going to be good, good enough. I'll, um, I'm not going to try and straighten it up. It's, I'd be here all the evening. So, uh, conclusion then. Um, I gotta say, I think uh, this did it better than I thought it would. Yes, I was expecting it to really struggle with the hills, and I was absolutely right. And I was expecting it to just go straight ahead at the corners if I'm braking hard, and it did that too. But overall, it did pretty good, and we even got almost three miles per gallon. That's, uh, okay. That's a bit misleading, because three miles per gallon, two Priuses, and uh, two um, teleports. So, yeah, we did cheat quite a bit, but hey, sometimes that's what you got to do. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, I hope you had a great week and uh, click like below if you liked it. If you didn't like it, click like anyway because it's fine. And you can subscribe for more. Thanks so much, everyone. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Goodbye.